Hey, it's Steve and Caleb with Brownells, and we're out here at Big Springs Range in Iowa, and we're gonna do a little sighting in today. We are, Steve, but this one's a little bit different. We're gonna be sighting in a thermal optic, uh, specifically the Pulsar Italian XQ35 Pro. Uh, but a lot of what we're gonna cover here is pretty much for any thermal yeah. optic. And uh, first things first, we have our target set up. It's a nice sunny day. You can you know zero your thermal whenever because it's thermal. Um, but it's easier if it's during the day because you can have a spotter with right. you uh, to help you out. And um, this optic here uh, technically has a, a one-shot zero, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, as we get into it. Um, but with that being said, we just have a basic target posted up here. And then we just took a piece of aluminum foil, cut out a one inch square and stuck it in the middle. What for? Uh, well, so the theory is that like this thing would kind of heat up in the sun and provide a, a heat oh, source. Oh, a signature. Yeah, but it doesn't really work that well. But what it does do, it still provides a flat signature different sure. from the paper. It's reflecting where the paper absorbs. Right, maybe. right. Yeah, so um, yeah, basically. So the, the point is, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a rocket surgeon and you're not a scientist, I don't think. I suspected it all along. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's how it works. So it's easy to see on the target versus just the target. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, but you can also use other things like you can use like hand warmers, like the toe warmers, oh, yeah. different stuff like that. Um, but I don't, I don't want to use that because if you just kind of clip the edge of it, then it's going to all spill out and then you, you're going to lose that heat source. I understand. Um, but it does work temporarily. So if you have those and you want to use those, that's great. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's move to the bench and kind of really get into it. Talk all about what we're going to do. All right, let's lock and load. Yep. All right, so we're at the bench and kind of, I'll just walk you through what we're working with here. Uh, we have a AR-15 chambered in 5.56. And I won't get into like too much of the details of the gun itself, because it really doesn't matter. You can apply everything we're going over here to whichever gun you want and whichever caliber you want really. Uh, but as far as ammunition goes, Steve, what we're working with here is, uh, you know, our favorites. Oh, okay. We got, our, we got our Hornady. So I have the Superformance match loaded up, uh, but if you're gonna be, you know, hunting or, you know, shooting other stuff with this thing, Hornady critical defense, this is a, it's a, similar to their pistol ammo, their critical defense ammo, except this one's a uh, 55 grain, 223, which is awesome ammo. Uh, but we're gonna stick with this Superformance match, and I think this one is a, yeah, 75 grain. So, excellent for long range AR shooting. But what I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna kinda talk you through it as I go through here. So this optic has a zeroing mode. Uh, so once you enter that mode, you're able to fire one shot, and then you have a second reticle that you move to your point of impact while maintaining your main reticle and the, the main point of impact, and then hit okay, and then the rifle's zeroed in one shot, which is super cool. That's a really cool feature with just digital scopes in general, I find. And um, yeah, so everything's digital in this particular optic, obviously, being thermal. So I'm just gonna load up around. I'm gonna fire around, then I'm gonna do that zeroing we talked about here. All right, and focus adjustment is on the front of the optic. And then you can alternate between magnifications as well. So we got 10x, we can go two and a half, five, but we're gonna, we're just gonna throw it at 10. All right. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fire a shot, then I'm gonna go internet zeroing mode. All right, Steve, can you see where see that it? one hit? About five o'clock. Five o'clock, all right. Yep. Which is great, because I can't really see it in the optic. So we'll, what we're probably gonna need to do, because I can't see a hole, so what we'll actually do is take another piece of foil and put it on that impact so that I can then use that one shot zero feature. Oh. So let me go ahead and clear this, and uh, that's what we'll do. 
All right, so I'm gonna go into the menu here, reticle and zeroing, click on distance, then go to zeroing. All right, so from here, I need to hold on the center of the target and then go to windage and elevation. Then from here, I can change that and you can see the X moving. So that second reticle is what you want to put on your point of impact. So that's why we're doing this at 25 yards. All right, so then that's X axis. Now we're going to go to Y axis and move that down to that point of impact, which is right there. All right, and then once we go back, it will be good to go. It'll be zeroed. And then we can zoom in. You can see that X there. You can fine tune it, and that is it. And that is our new zero. All right, so now we need to fire another shot and see where we're at. All right, so we'll just go ahead and fire another shot. You're right off the right edge. Right off the right edge? Yeah. All right. Well, I will just move that over. So that's a one inch square that's up there, Steve. So yeah. where's that bullet impact in, a, in relation to the square? Right on the right edge of it, just a little bit above halfway. Okay. So if you were to put your aiming point over on the other side of the square and then dial in, you'd probably be all right. Gotcha. Okay, so I'll just go through that same system again, make that yeah. adjustment and uh, we'll be good to go. So they say one shot zero, but you know, it's only as good as the operator, unfortunately. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, so uh, no big deal, nice and easy. So I'll just make this adjustment here, go back into the menu, zeroing, zero. All right, and we're back. So I'll zoom in again. All right, windage and elevation. So being just off the right edge, that's where I need to be right there. Mm -hmm. Then we'll, you said just above halfway? Yep, just above halfway. Perfect. That and get you very, very close. There we go. All right, now we'll fire another shot. Oh, still to the right, but a little under center now. I'm gonna fire one more shot. All right. You hit the, the right side of the tinfoil. And I'm gonna do a three shot group. It's right in there. All right. Let's go take a look. Let's go take a look. All right. So as you can see, um, we're a little bit off there, not exactly where I want to be, but we're pretty darn close. So you get, you can kind of get the idea of it. So what we did, we shot one shot first, that impacted down here. We covered it with foil so we could see it. And then we used the built-in system to just basically hold our reticle here, move that secondary reticle down. And then that got us right here which I probably wasn't perfectly on this because that is a little, it's still a little hard to see in a thermal optic. Um, so actually, you know, thinking about it now, Steve, yeah. this is where using something heated would come in a really good, really helpful, uh, getting that first shot coverage. Um, but that's no big deal. Still not using very many shots to zero at all. Uh, still may actually, I have it set, so that optic you can set up for mills, um, MRAD, you know, whatever. 
So I have it set to MRAD because that's where that's how my ballistic calculator is set. So okay, okay. I can actually just move this over a little bit without uh, without even having to really shoot again and, and be good to go. But what we'll do is we'll get that set up and then uh, yeah we'll just verify and go from there. So we should be easy. And also Steve, with that system set up, we put our distance in. We were also, if you notice, we had the chronograph set up. Right. Uh, so we were getting our bullet velocity. So we'll be able to plug in these profiles and get it stretched out kind of as far as we want and be able to be able to set any distance we want in cool. theory. So yeah, let's uh let's just kind of go from there. All right. All right. So as I mentioned before, you can put in different ballistic profiles and things like that. Um, also internal storage and cloud storage for what you record. So you can record video in it uh, and you can also take screenshots and stuff. Uh, but so that app is called, that is Stream Vision. And let me get it pulled up here. So you have Stream Vision 2 as well as the ballistic calculator. Um, Stream Vision pairs directly to your, your device via Wi-Fi. So your device will actually put out a Wi-Fi signal that you connect to. Uh, you can go to the gallery and, and if you go to device, device storage. These are all the videos we recorded today while we were shooting this. You can view those. Um, different settings and stuff like that. If you go to settings and then go to Stream Vision Ballistics, you will see that this is where, we'll just select our device here. This is the ballistic calculator for this device. So if you've ever used anything uh, similar to, let's say like applied ballistics or anything like that, you'll be super familiar with the way this works. And we also put in our bullet information. So the round we were shooting, uh, this Hornady Match Superformance, and we also have the table for it. So as you can see, this is the, this is the table set up. So we, zero it, we zeroed it at 25, uh, and then this is where it's gonna be. So we have our reticle in here set up for MRAD. So we can just, this is all of our holds at, out to, all the way out to 500 yards. And you can set it further than that. Um, but yeah, so at that muzzle velocity, so roughly 3,000 foot per second, 500 yards, our hold is 2.23 MRAD, uh, which checks out. That's what all my other similar rifles hold for as well. So, I mean, with this, all you need to do is just pair it up with a rangefinder. This particular model does not have a built-in rangefinder. It does have a built-in ranging table, um, but that's a little bit different. And yeah, so I mean, if you pair this up with a rangefinder or you just know your distances, your holds for like where you're hunting at and things like that, uh, this thing will be dead on. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's go take one final look at the target, and uh, and I'll, I'll I'll let you guys go. All right, we're back down range, and it is looking pretty good right here. Yeah. So once we got it dialed in, got it figured out, you know, good 25 yard zero. We got our ballistic calculator table set up, um, and one feature we didn't even talk about, Steve, is that actually if you're using a smartphone, you can watch the reticle in the phone, so you don't even have to really look behind it. Oh, cool. I completely forgot about that, but better late than never, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's all there is to it. That's Thermaling, uh, Thermaling a zero optic. <laughs> that's zeroing a thermal optic. Uh, and like I said, we were using the Pulsar Italian, but I mean, it applies for a lot of their other models and it applies for a lot of other thermal optics as well. We just really love the Pulsar. Uh, series, especially that tally, and that is an awesome optic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Steve, so I mean, maybe next time I'll let you shoot it. Who knows? Cool. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Now that you've done the hard work. Yeah, I've done the hard work, so I'll let you shoot an animal or something with it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so overall, a uh, very successful day at the range. Yeah. And if you have any experience with thermal optics you'd like to share, I know we didn't cover every little thing. Um, or if you just have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, feel free to post them down below if you're watching this on YouTube or similar. And uh, as always, if you need help with anything for any reason ever, uh, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.